Hey guys, Keith Keller, Melbourne, Australia, and we've got a very, very, very cool show today. We've got an, an event coming up soon called, uh, for especially for Global Social Media Day, and we're promoting that with a series of live streams ahead of time. And we're going to be talking about all sorts of social media stuff and all sorts of uh, trends, and, and it's going to be really a lot of fun. That's on 30th of June in Melbourne, 29th of June uh, in the US and Canada. And today we have one of our very special guests from that event. Sophie is actually going to be doing the halftime show, just like the Super Bowl, <laughs> at 5 p.m. Pacific. She's going to be singing quite a few of her songs. And so today I thought what I would do is I would interview Sophie about how she's using social media, mainly Twitter, to promote her songs. We're actually going to be hearing quite a few of her songs today and you can make comments if you want. I, I just want to work you through exactly how the, the format is today. We, You can watch the show on Twitter or via Periscope or on YouTube. So I'd like to know where you're watching the show, what's your favourite platform for that. I'd also like to know where your um, what devices you're watching on. I, do you have a laptop? Have you, have you got an iPad? Do you watch it on your phone? This will help us decide how to position the formatting. And also I'd love to know where you, where you live. Are you in the US and Canada or are you in Australia or New Zealand or Zimbabwe? You know, where are you calling in from? So let's say uh, let's get that started. But Sophie, welcome, welcome to the show. And tell us a little bit about uh, how you use social media and why is, is Twitter the thing at the moment for you? Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, social media is it's, it's definitely sometimes tricky, but I use Twitter and um, Twitter is very good for me. I mean, it's all about pushing yourself and promoting yourself and making sure that you're your name is out there every day, every minute of the day, and yeah. And can you say, well, I've got, I've actually set aside a couple of questions for you. Um, let me bring myself back on there. Um, the three questions I've got today, which we'll, I will answer over the course of the hour, is what are your favourite sites? I think we've worked out that Twitter's working best. How do you use it? Give us some tips on how to use it. And do you have any examples? So give me some examples of how you're using Twitter and how it's worked and how other people can possibly do it too. Yeah. Um, with Twitter, I really, I really love how you can promote yourself, but also you can share with others and... Um, you can share and just um, be friends with people on Twitter and like, I don't know, just retweet and stuff like yeah. that. So I think that is a really helpful thing where if you're tweeting someone else, you're helping them out, but also, well, also at the same time, they're helping you out, if, you know. So I think that is definitely something that's really cool about Twitter. Um, let, me, let me pick up on that. You, you've mentioned a very, very good thing, and I'm so proud of you for getting this. Because a lot of people I know in, in the music industry say, mate, mate, I'm the singer. I mean, I'm the singer of a band. Why would I follow other people? I, I'm mm -hmm. not helping anyone else. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm, we're the band. Like, we're mm -hmm. the dudes. But you, you get it. You get it that if you help each other out, we all rise together, don't we? Yeah. Yep. And so by you tweeting someone else about this show, say, then they might come on the next show and you'll tweet about that. And, and it's a symbiotic relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. We help each other when we rise up together. You're coming on my event and so I'm doing a show for you. It's just so cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's really cool. So we've had our first comment, um, you, a laptop and uh, calling in from the US. I think this is a contact for you, Sophie. Do you, uh, do you know Hatadorium? Um, I do. I know them. Yeah, well, I, I I think they've made quite a few comments. They're a big fan, and so thank you for calling in and uh, let us letting us know that you you uh what you watch on your laptop and you're calling in from the US. So that's good. That's good to know that we we're, we're, we're basic on on uh, US time. So the, one of the things I love about uh, Streamyard is that you have this facility to have comments that um, I can actually have live comments while you're talking and I can scour the, the comments. You can do that on YouTube and Periscope. So so you're saying that um, so firstly... Yeah, I <laughs> sorry? I do know them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, they've, they've, been, they've been commenting quite um, 
prolifically and please add more comments or questions or, or requests if you like because i'm pretty sure you would know the songs that sophie sings so um you've mentioned that one of the very key points one of the very key points about your twitter strategy or your social media strategy in particular is that you you it's very symbiotic in the sense that you help others and they help you and you rise together would, yeah. would you say that's one of your central principles then and is that working have you got some examples Definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just sharing other people's things and, um, I don't know, being encouraging to other people as well. I mean, sometimes social media can be a really upsetting place, but I find it to not be if you're upbeat about it and posting really positive things. Um, so, yeah, I think just helping others and I feel like it just comes back to you and helps yourself as well. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Well, look, why don't we start with... Um why don't we start with one of the songs that you actually did on social media and it's had almost 10,000 views. So why don't we start with Butterflies? Okay. Yeah, is because that's the song that I've seen first. So sing that one and then let's chat after that about cool. how you made a little video on your phone and how it's had 10,000 views. Yeah. So okay. let's, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll move you into the frame, fill the frame and you can take it away. Cool. Yeah, this song is Butterflies. I hope you guys like it. If butterflies could escape from my mind, what would they do? Where would they go? If my head could ever get some rest What would I do? Where would I go? Finding the torn seams of this chapter But I have broken wings They are shattered Emeralds of light Purple champagne, flowers don't cry, and clouds don't rain, mountains provide, shadows at day, this is my life, I'll find it someday, but I'll have to wake up again. Oh, if butterflies could escape from my thoughts, what would they say? Who would they tell? If my head could ever read my mind, what would I say? Who would I tell? Finding the torn seams of this chapter, but I have broken wings, they are shattered. Emeralds of light, purple champagne, flowers don't cry, the clouds don't rain, mountains provide, shadows a day, this is life, I'll find someday. I'll have to wake up again. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Ooh. I'll have to wake up again. Amazing. <laughs> so I love that. I love that song. And I, I noticed that um I noticed that what you did with that particular song, you just took a very small part of it, maybe the verse, 
and you did it for like 60 seconds mm -hmm. and it did it on your phone. Can you explain how you did that and, and why um, why it's been so popular? Because it's it's had almost 10,000 views. Thanks. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so how, mean, did, how did you do that? So how I did that was, I mean, I just took a portion of the song and then I was like, you know, I mean, sometimes people don't listen through things all the way. Sometimes they don't give attention to a lot of things, but I just edited it out and I edited that little clip of the whole song out. And then um, I just posted it. But I feel like with this like age and like with people, I feel like everyone has like a short term memory where it's like, you know, it's like, or, or the fact that they're not gonna watch a video for what, two, three minutes, you know? So yeah. Yeah. I think if it's shortened down and just simplified, sometimes it draws attention more than, you know, the whole thing. But, yeah, so. Well, a, a big hello to my mate, um, the Green Boater in um, Vancouver. I'm, I'm so excited that he's calling. And Bruno's calling. Uh, great sound reminds me of Alice Phoebe. Alice Phoebe Lou. I actually haven't heard of that person, but I'm guessing you would know who that is, Sophie. I actually don't know who that is. But that okay. Well, let's find let's find a YouTube video for that, and we'll share that later. But um, what you said, and so much, thanks so much, Bruno. I know that uh, it's late there in uh, Vancouver, and uh, we're trying this new live streaming format. Uh, Bruno loves YouTube as well, but actually records his videos ahead of time. So what you said there was really interesting. Let's pull apart what you said there. You you recorded a video on your phone, but mm -hmm. you made it just a, a small section, possibly the verse or possibly the chorus. Yeah. Now, the reason why that works really well, and I'll put this um, particular video in the feed again, it's had almost 10,000 views, is that with Twitter, if you can make the video less than 60 seconds, it will loop. And what mm -hmm. that means is, you know, you're singing the verse and it just naturally fades out and then it starts again. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you're loving the song, you can just listen to it over and over and over and over again. And in, in Twitter, which has 9,000, 9,000 tweets a second, I can't even say that, I'm so nervous. You know, there's 9,000 tweets a second on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So you actually have really, you've really got to push hard. You, you know, you've really got to push hard to get your attention. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, You've actually you've actually created a bit of a power hack. You've done an, a, a sixty second version. I think it actually goes about forty seconds, mm -hmm. and it just naturally fades out at the end of the verse and then starts again. And so you can sing along with it, and it just keeps going. Yeah. And it, proof of the pudding because you've had um, about ten thousand views on that video. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is great if you've got a gig coming up, or if you're saying, "Hey, this is my new song." And I know you're doing a song with your brother in June. We, we can't do that today because he's not here. But that, can you tell me a little bit about how you promoted that song? Because that's a, that's your new song and your brother that's plays guitar. And, you know, quite a complex chord pattern. So um, how, does, how, did, how did you promote that song and how did it differ with, with him being involved? Um, I think it just differed the fact that there was another person involved, another difference. I mean, it's it's more of like when I say, oh, hey, I'm releasing a song and, you know, but I feel like with having another person on it, it just kind of draws more attention. And so I yeah. think it's something that really helps that. So, Well, that, because it's quite a, it's, I'm, I'm guessing it's a quite a complex chord pattern. I, I think it's pretty miraculous myself that people can sing and play at the same time because I, I personally can't chew gum and walk at the same time. So, you know, I, I find that sort of stuff pretty difficult. So the, the advantage of having the advantage of having a, a second person in is that you can make much more complex patterns. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're not doing everything because, as you can tell, like I'm running the show on my own and I've got to push buttons and I've got to talk and I've got to tweet and I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And then when you tweet, I've, I've got to tweet that. And then when you, you talk, I've got to move you in there. So it's always good to have a bit of a team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you're using Twitter. Is it only Twitter? Or do you have other sites that also work? Do you, so for instance, send your songs to YouTube? Yeah, I still do. I still do YouTube. I still do Instagram and sometimes Facebook. But um, I don't know. I just find Twitter to be really easy. The the most like the most beneficial thing I feel like from Twitter, as far as being a musician and sharing links and songs songs and stuff like that, is that on Twitter 
you can have the link right there and you can have your video playing live like right there you know you don't have to click yeah. on it like instagram or whatever but it's just like i find that really helpful and um yeah so i mean i still am on every other um platform but i just find that twitter is the most useful which is kind of interesting though because i i didn't get twitter until I believe last summer so it's yeah. like i've been working it for a year like actually working it. i've always had it but it's like it was i was yeah. this whole world of twitter before so what when you say you didn't get it you just didn't understand it yeah yeah yeah. yeah, well, that's the most common question that I actually have about Twitter. I mean, how does it work? You've you've had it on your phone forever, but you just never turned it on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, just what, never, I never understood the algorithms of it, I think. Like, that was just the whole thing of it, but, yeah. Well, you know, the thing that's really powerful about what you've said there, let, let me pull apart another power hack you just mentioned that most people don't know, is that with Twitter, when you play a video in Twitter, it auto-plays. Mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about there so when mm -hmm. you put a video on twitter it plays inside the tweet you don't have to click a link to open it up yep which means you've just saved some people a lot of time which means mm -hmm. they're likely to do it i've actually seen people i've done it myself here's a link to my youtube video well that's great but you've got to click on it to open mm -hmm. it yep. and we're busy and you don't know what's there so you're not likely to open it yeah. Whereas, and I'm, I'm going to share some of your uh, videos that you've done this on. When when the video is playing, you catch my eye. Hey, this this could be good. I might mm -hmm. I might have a look at that. There's Keith speaking, and there's Sophie singing, and uh, what's that about? You've caught mm -hmm. my eye. Whereas, if you're scrolling through your feed, and you just see a random link, you know you have no idea what it, it's about. Yeah. And you're not inclined to open it just simply because it could be spam. It, it might be okay, but you're busy, mm -hmm. and so that's why I think you you're very you're very right that uh, Twitter is a in for musicians a mm -hmm. bit of a power hack, and yeah. it's a bit of an it's a bit of an unknown quantity as you said. It took you a while to learn it, didn't it? Yeah, it took me a second. I mean, I just kind of never touched it. I just never understood it. But I don't know. I just was like, you know what? Let's try it out and see if this actually helps me because I felt like Twitter, I mean, uh, Instagram and Facebook were just like, I don't know, sometimes it's really hard to get people's attention and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, what, what, what was it that attracted you to Twitter? What was what? Can you remember the moment when you said, you know, this is working? Can you remember a, a moment where you thought, hang on, this is good. I might do more of this. I think or did you just was, try it? I just tried it, but I think it was when it was just like getting all the, like, I don't know, just making a lot of friends and, like, chatting on there and, and uh, stuff like that. I don't know. It just kind of went progressively day by day. But I think it was really, like, as far as friends, I mean, like, my music, Twitter family, I feel like, really, like, I got into a groove and I got yeah, into a community. Yeah, that's right. It's so, a tribe, um, isn't it? It's a, it is a yeah, community, isn't it? it? Yeah, and it really helps. So I think that is something that really helps that, so... Yeah. Well, why don't you sing another song? I know you've got a um, you've song, got a song called Tomorrow, which yes. also has had a lot of views. We haven't played it, uh, or I haven't featured that one yet, but that one's had five thousand views. Was it the same format, just a, a video on your phone? Yeah. Yeah. All okay. of my videos that I've done recent or so far have only been on my phone, but yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you play that one, and I'll, I'll find that and I'll feature that as well. Cool. Yeah. This is tomorrow. Thank you. 
no, not for now. It's in my mind. I'm scared, but I'll be fine. I can hardly breathe now. How do I? I love it. I just love it. Thank you. There, there's some there's some complex chord patterns in there, and I, 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 the reason I know that is because my wife is learning guitar, and so um, I, I watch your chord shapes, and I'm getting a sense of what she's doing. And I notice you play with a capo. Yeah. Can, can you explain a little bit about why you play with a capo and what that means? Does that just allow you to play in the key that suits your voice better? Yeah. I mean, I sometimes I play without a capo. Like I have a song or. I have many songs that came up, but um, I uh, I don't know. I just like it because, like, if I create something and I'm like, man, I wish this was higher in yeah, or yeah. whatever or in a different key, then I'll raise it up. But yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about the history of why you started in music and how you got to to where you are now? I think this would be a really interesting story to tell. Uh, we, I, I put you on the spot here, but, um, you know, you're obviously a very accomplished player and songwriter and singer, so that doesn't come out of nowhere. So can can we hear a little bit about that story and how yeah. you became such a, a, you know, great at all three? Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, I've been playing, I've been singing since I don't know how long. I mean, it feels like forever. I mean, since I was little, I was always singing to Disney songs, you know, just like as a little kid would do. But I've always loved singing and I uh, I did choir at my school in fourth grade all the way up until my freshman year of high school. But um, at that time when I was about nine, I was in a little kid band with my brothers um, called Sophie and the Boys with a Z. And so wow. we, yeah, and so we would actually, it was like this little organization that would put a band together and then we would go out in uh, restaurants or bars or whatever and we would play for people, just covers, but it was, it was really good for um, performing wise and not being afraid to be on stage. And so I think that's something that's really helped me with being able yeah. to play in front of people. And then Brings it, um, got yeah. your confidence up. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then um, when I was about 13 uh, or 12 or 13, I picked up the guitar and I had a few lessons here and there. And then I kind of taught myself after that. And then I would, after, 
I mean, that same year, I actually wrote a song or three, I think. And then I released it same that year too. But yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I don't know. And then, but after, not after that, but I've been outperforming ever since um, that. And I've been out on my own, just performing live, doing gigs um, anywhere and everywhere in Phoenix that I can imagine. But yeah, I mean, as far as performing live, it's all about promoting yourself as well. And, and yeah, well, let me up. pick up on that, Sophie. Let me pick up on that, Sophie. You, you've yeah. said a couple of things. You said you started in a band where you were singing. Mm hmm and then you this is really powerful then you said uh, look I, I decided to learn guitar and i taught myself and uh, and then i wrote a song and of course it's like a good joke once you've heard once you've written a song you're not just going to sing it in your bedroom you want to tell everyone yep <laughs> so, you know in the 2020s we're we're in this unique position where we can tell almost the whole world about our creative projects straight away yeah. Now you can write a song on the Monday and it can be on YouTube on Wednesday night, you know, mm -hmm. Tuesday night, maybe even that day. And you and uh, we have this immediacy. And more importantly than immediacy, the intimacy. Mm -hmm. Like I remember seeing bands years ago and you had no chance of ever talking to them. There's, there's no way you'd ever get to talk to them in real life. Now and with social media, and this is another key point to play out, mm -hmm. with social media we can actually talk to the artist. And more importantly, you can talk to your audience. So you can say, look, I really like that song where you've got the capo on the second fret. Can you do more of those songs? I really like those. Mm -hmm. Or actually, I really like it when your brother plays. Can you do more songs together? You get yeah. a bit of an interactive sense of, hey, what, is the, what does the crowd want? You know, and, and it's more immediate, more, uh, have you noticed that, that you're you starting to communicate more with your, your tribe? Is that happening yeah. more and more? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, um. I'd imagine the, the the interaction is really is really very much part of the point. And the, you, the other question I'm really interested in picking up again on our gig that we have: Are you now starting to find yourself doing more online gigs, or are you still playing gigs in Phoenix? Yeah, um, I mean, ever since COVID, I mean, I was always playing out and about like every weekend. So, I mean, since COVID, I haven't been able to. Uh, play as much but I still do um a time to time when I can and I mean yeah but I mainly do online stuff which is good to yeah. keep playing so yeah and have you experimented yet with Periscope have you experimented with the idea of just turning your camera on or your phone on and actually going live on the internet on the app yeah, I mean I haven't done Periscope the app but I've done it on uh Instagram Facebook before. Yeah, okay. So I've done that before, but yeah. And have you found that that can be a little bit complex in the sense that you're playing a song and someone's asking a question? Have you had trouble from toggling that? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I haven't done it a lot, but um, when I do, sometimes it's difficult. And, I mean, I don't even know if the person's still there or not, but, yeah. Now, there's a, there's a comment for you. <laughs> Let's bring back Sophie and the boys. Well, I mean, my my one brother that plays Until June with me and that's writing songs with me and all that, he was one member of the BAM band, one of three. So my other brother doesn't play music anymore. But, um, yeah, so probably no. But. <laughs> okay, and, and that's what covers anyway, isn't it? What? It was covers, yeah. Yeah, I just covered because we were really little. We didn't really. Yeah, well, it, it could be it could be one of those where are they now moments where you have you got photos from it? Did you take some photos at the time? I'd love oh, to yeah. see those. Yeah. You know, we've all got those photos of our first band or our first job or our first gig or our you know our first holiday. They're always fascinating to look at, eh? Yeah. Now we've got another comment that there's a lot of echo. Can you just uh, clarify there? Is it is there echo on my side here in Melbourne? Or has Sophie got a lot of echo when she's speaking or, more importantly, singing? Let's just clarify how that sounds because one of the things that happens with StreamYard, this is a very important uh, distinction, StreamYard, which I love, Sophie is a great artist and I'm looking forward to hearing more of her releases. Okay, that's great. That's exactly what we want to hear. That's exactly what we want to hear, yeah? And this is exactly why I love the live streaming format. You know, we've got comments from the audience. But um, with regards to echo and sound, I, I really want to pick, pick, on, pick up on this. 
Uh, StreamYard has got a lot of great functions and it's quite affordable. It's about 25 bucks a month and you can have up to three sites and you get all these great recordings. But there is another site called Stream, uh, Restream. I don't know if you've heard of this one. And Restream is like a competitor, Pepsi and Coley, you know, Pepsi and Coke and, you know, Apple and iPhone and Samsung. You know, there's Ford and Holden. There's always two going on at any one time. And Restream is almost identical to StreamYard, but it has a much stronger emphasis on musicians. Hmm. So, for instance, you can record in stereo. Hmm. And, and there's a lot more functions for the audio file. That's cool. Uh, and so that's a handy thing to remember if there's a bit of echo there and a little bit of a problem with the sound because I did I did sense some feedback. But um, we're, we're trying these new techniques because, as you said, we're all in uh, lockdown or variations on lockdown and you'd love to go and do a gig in the city but you can't. There's no gigs to play. Mm -hmm. So at least now we can share this this stream with all of my tribe all of your tribe and hopefully you'll get a, a sort of sl a slightly new audience from my following and it is it is a tremendous way to share our material isn't it oh totally yeah that's really cool okay so are the songs that you do with your brother are they different than the songs you write on your own does he have a different musicality to you does he have a different sense of things uh have you, have you noticed those songs are slightly different um, as far as like genre goes, we're pretty, pretty still on the same path as far as genre, but I mean, music, musically wise, instrumental wise, I feel like he's a lot more advanced and stuff that I might not be in. So it definitely helps with creating and stuff like that. So yeah, he I think can think of more ideas. I think, yeah, I mean, and we can also bounce off of each other and stuff like that. So I think it's really really cool thing that not a lot of people might have but yeah so I mean I still write songs on my own and he still writes songs on his own if he wants to but um yeah but yeah that that interplay that interplay between hey so I've got this really cool riff what do you think of this can mm -hmm. you write some words over that well mm -hmm. yeah we well, yeah okay and, and you might say hey look I've got these really cool words but I just can't get the I can't get the chords just having the idea of being able to bounce an, the idea off someone else who might have a better sense of, of timing or a better sense of chord play or maybe you, you have a better maybe sense of uh, lyrical quality than your brother may be. And even, even if you were identical, the fact that you come together means that there's really a third person in the room because there's this, this third force. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you know what I mean, but yeah. when, you, when there's two people in a room, there's really a third person there because you've got, look, you've got, energy that goes above the two of you singularly would you agree am oh, yeah. i on a bit of a rant yeah. there or did i just make that up no no yeah i totally get you yeah yeah so we've got some more comments noel is actually calling in from ireland it's about two in the morning there thank you so much well done sophie and keith great to see the new innovative collaboration between technology and music don't you just love this mm -hmm. just look at, look at, let's just pull apart what we're doing here i'm in melbourne australia Sophie is in Phoenix, Arizona, and Noel is in Ireland. Right. Now, when in the world would you ever have those three people in the same room at one of your gigs? <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. cool. So thanks so much, Noel. I really, really appreciate that. And thanks for staying up for us because it's uh, actually a, a really uh, really late night. So a, a, cool, a few more comments. Um, awesome. The echo is fixed. No more spinning. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I don't know how we fixed that. It might have just fixed itself over over time. And then another really cool comment, it's a tribute to how good her voice is that the sound is good on streaming with all that, with all that echo. And that's a very good point, that um, the technology is not perfect, mm -hmm. but it's a good showcase for what you do. And we've had confirmation from the audience that you're te technologically, you know, awesome. And that's really, really cool. So we've got more, you know, more comments coming in. I could not agree more. Awesome to be international, and it's, you know, and it's all over. It's all over the world. So that that really picks up on again. I want, I really want to play out this idea that we're doing an event, Global Social Media Day. Let's just play this out. Global Social Media Day. It'll be ten in the morning, nine in the morning when we start in Melbourne, ten o'clock when you do your gig. 
it'll be five a uh, four pm in uh, Phoenix when the gig starts or when the show starts. But your little segment is at five o'clock. Mm-hmm. So we've yeah. got Phoenix. We've got people calling in from London. We've got people calling in from Dublin. We've got people calling in from um, uh, Connecticut, Austria. You know, mm-hmm. New York, Perth. And um, it is really global social media day. And really what, what this show is all about and what live streaming is all about for me is the idea that I'm a guy in Melbourne, Australia, and I know stuff, some stuff, but I'm just one guy. And picking up on this third person in the room, you and I together create an energy that is much more powerful than us singularly, yeah, mm-hmm. because I, I've introduced you to my tribe. You've come on my show and given my tribe some entertainment and some really interesting insights. So everyone wins. Would you agree? Oh, yes, definitely. Ah, okay. So uh, there's a Tulsa, Oklahoma is where um, one of my Three Minds Bright Music. Now, uh, you've written some songs with him, haven't you? Is that, yeah, is that I did. I did a collab with Mike um, uh, back in January. It was called Reflections. Okay, do you know that song? Can you play that on your own or am I putting you on the spot? On my own. That's all right. No, that's all right. No, it's, as I said, it's it's very complex to play guitar and sing at the same time. As I said, <laughs> I can't chew gum and walk in, in, in the same day. So um, so that's great. You've got um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you've got some inspiration, some collabs, which I, which I love. Uh, we've got um, Atlanta, Georgia. Someone's calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. That's pretty, pretty good. Uh, great interview, Sophie. Love your new single until June. Definitely international, Keith. I'm, I'm from London. Daniel McCarthy. Look at this. Look at this. London. Can you believe it? On the same call. Ireland, UK, Australia, US, and Bruno calling in from Vancouver, Canada. That's five, con- that's five countries that's in the one-hour call. call. I, you know, more than I could have expected myself. So thank you thank you for that, Daniel. I, I definitely love the idea that we're international. And, again, that must be about one in the morning there, so I thank you so much for staying up. might be something about like half past midnight. Question for Sophie. We've got, we've got questions. Are you, up, are you up for questions? Which artists do you admire and how they promote themselves online and how can you learn from them? Hmm. Um, well, as far as online... One of my friends, Mike from Three Three Mind Blight, he is an artist that I take a lot of advice from as far as online um, promoting themselves and and stuff like that. So I think he is definitely someone that I take a lot from. And Mm. yeah, so he is one of my artists that I admire. Uh, well, he, there's a mutual admiration society going on there, and feel free to tell us exactly how you're doing it there, Mike. Uh, there's some some more comments uh, from Noel. Uh, many stories and great artists being featured and found on YouTube. Ah, yes, 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 yes. The um, the guy that now sings. This is a really interesting story. The guy that now sings with Journey, who's actually from Manila, sounds exactly like absolutely exactly like the singer from Journey. <laughs> But he now lives in Manila. He actually has sang recently at a live stream, um, and he was in Manila, and the band, I can't remember whether they did it and synced it up, but he sang on his own. And we're now seeing live streaming as a, as a viable option in the world of entertainment. This is heresy for some musicians. I know this, but I, I'm very excited by the fact that they're, and this is a very good example, I'm very excited about the fact that we now have this online streaming facility. And there's a, there's a phrase we use in the sort of the marketing game now called hybrid. And um, I really want to play out on this. A lot of people still want to go in person. And I get that. You know, there's nothing better than going into the, 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 the city and seeing someone play. But if we can't do it, then we, we need to find these hybrid models. And so there's there's a lot of discussion about this. And I think with what we're doing next week, and in a few weeks, I think we've got a good mix here. You know, we, we're actually, Sophie's playing a song or a couple of songs at halftime, the halftime show, just like, you know, the Super Bowl. I'm very excited about that. I'm extremely excited about this halftime show idea. We've got possibly a magician coming to an event. 
You know, we've got a networking facility where you get this little network roulette where it spins a wheel and, you know, you don't know who you're going to get. And for the 10 seconds that it takes you to find your match, there's this anticipation, who am I going to get? And so we're trying to replicate we're trying to replicate the real world in an environment where we can't have the real world. And uh, it's not perfect, but I, I think it's uh, it's a pretty good uh, sort of mashup in a way, isn't it? Mm -hmm, definitely. So uh, we've answered the question about favourite artists. We've answered that really. We've, we've mentioned uh, there's these cool collabs that are happening now online. Another another cool question. Sophie is amazing. I can't get too much of that. Love the collab. Such an amazing talent. She has an amazing voice and it fits all styles. And we'd need to riff on that a bit. So tell me a bit more about this collab. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we, me and Mike, we're always talking about doing a collab and we were like, hey, let's actually do it. So then we we did it. Um, it was really cool and it was really interesting because he lives in a totally different state than I do. So it's not like we could meet in person and do it ourselves like that. So we... Um, we had a phone call or two, and then we just emailed most of the time, and just, like, he sent over some cool tracks and was like, hey, like, what do you think? And I'm like, oh, it sounds so cool. Let me just see what I can do. And then I sent him my um, idea and ideas and stuff like that. And then, yeah, I mean, and then it was released. So it was really, yeah. it was really fun. It was really cool. So it was, it was amazing. Different than what I've ever done before, but, yeah. And, uh just picking up on that, I admire Sophie for her drive, talent, and for, for such a young age, she has business sense and is a seasoned pro. So we, we just need to keep these comments coming because they're <laughs> great, aren't they? Now, as I said, this is why I love the live streaming idea. Uh, I've done a lot of videos and sent them to YouTube. Australia has really, really, really slow internet. Mm -hmm. So we could have recorded this video on Zoom and it would have been great mm -hmm. and it would have been in HD and I would have edited it and I would have put it to YouTube, but it would have taken me like six hours to send it there. And mm -hmm. then all of the energy is lost from the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't get the comments, right? So now the comments actually feed the content. This is the thing I really love. And thanks for all of the great comments we've had so far. Um, we've also got another comment that Reflections is a great song. You and Sophie did a great job with that one. I'm guessing that's a collab song and Mike probably played the guitar on that, did he? Yeah, he did all the instrumental stuff to it, yeah. Yeah. And, we, like, we've seen an example of this recently with, uh, I don't know if you've seen the song with Mick Jagger and Dave Grohl. So, um, you know, Mick Jagger had this idea of writing a song and he sent the stuff to Mike, to, to Dave Grohl, who's like a super muser, and he, he did all of the instruments. He played the drums and the bass and the guitar and did the solo and did the harmonies and, and did the rhythm guitar and, and he mixed it all down. And Mick Jagger, you know, because he's a genius too, he sang the song, wrote the words. So here's an example in the real world of a, of a collab, you know, in the US and UK about what does it feel like to be locked inside for like six weeks? Mm -hmm. in, a, in a case of Australia, it was 12 weeks. 120 days it was for us. 120 days and all you could go outside was one hour for exercise and go to the shops once a week to get food. It was awful, right? But, you know, everyone's going yeah. through it. So, you know, we, 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 can, we can express our frustration, especially with music. So have you got some other songs you'd like to sing that pick up on sort of what's happening here with the idea of collabs or have you written some songs yourself, maybe some of those early ones from Sophie and the Boys? Now you've got the uh, capo on the seventh fret, is that right? Uh, sixth. Sixth fret because, it you know, it just suits your voice better? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. The song is called Leaves. I I released this song uh, some years ago now. I don't know, 2017, I believe. Um, yeah, I think this is just a really pretty song. I've always loved it. And this is also one of the ones that I put on my Twitter that a lot of people liked. So figure it out. Yeah. So this is Leaves. <laughs> the same as reality but I like living this fantasy the walls 
Bones are made out of dust. Oh, please just let me readjust. Oh, I don't know words to speak. Tears in my throat that whispering. I don't know the words to say. All these words are messing with my brain. Oh, I've stepped on these thorns. I've gone through this door. It's not the safest to make sure I don't fall apart to store my delicate heart the leaves are and my mind is fading like time in my memories. I don't think we think the same things. I don't know the words to speak. Tears in my throat. I don't know the words to say. All these words are messing with my brain. Oh, I've stepped on these thoughts. I've gone through this door. It's not the safest place. On these thoughts, I've gone through this door. It's not the safest place to make sure I don't fall apart, to store my delicate heart. Oh, lovely way to end. Is that a ninth chord? Uh, I have no idea. I just okay. <laughs> I, um, I've been playing around. My wife is learning guitar and um, I'm tr I, I used to play, I used to be a muso very early on and I was very good at theory. And I've been trying to teach my wife about arpeggios and ninth chords and sevenths and major sevenths and, and it's sus fours. And, and whenever I hear a really cool sound, because I have perfect, I have, Relative pitch, not perfect pitch. So I, I, I can't tell what it actually something is unless I base it on something else. So when I hear something, I go, oh, what's that? Is it a major yeah. seventh? Is it a ninth? Because that had a lovely really, what was that chord you played? What was the really lovely chord at the end? Yeah, what, um, can you play it again for me? Oh, yeah, let's yeah. See if, let's see if anyone else can guess it. What do you think, Mike? What do you think it is? A seventh? Major seven. Let's let's see if anyone. I'm just riffing now, but the, the point is that what we're doing here is we're talking about the idea of why social media is such a great way to share your music, and we're just riffing on well, what chord is that? What does it mean to play a capo at the sixth fret? Why do you do that? These are just questions that humanize Sophie. You know, you're an awesome uh, talent, and we need to expand on that. 
and everyone while you were singing you probably didn't see this but while you were singing all these really great comments yes great track leaves such a sophisticated songwriter daniel in london daniel in london is saying great performance sophie like he stayed up in the middle of the night to hear you singing <laughs> so this is this is really what we're talking about here with live streaming it's it's so much different it's so much better than just uh, an interview on YouTube where there's no interaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really want to perfect this. I don't see that many people doing it that often and I, I really want to sort of um, riff on that. But um, what, what the other thing I want to talk about is what do you, what, what songs are you going to sing at the halftime show? Are they different or are you just going to do a collection of what you've done today or do you have some new songs you'd like to premiere or have you worked out the songs you might want to sing? Hmm. Um. I don't know. I'm probably just, I mean, I'm probably going to perform the ones that I did today, but also some more, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I think maybe some new ones. I'm not totally sure yet, but maybe. Okay. So even Mike has trouble talking with the capos really thrown him off. Hard to say what the capo is. She strikes the chord every time. Ah, that's great. She strikes the chord Every time she plays, doesn't matter what chord you play, you strike a chord. That's lovely. That's a that's a and um, as as Mike said, their IP plays by ear. So uh, you know, I I was a, a very much a theory person, and not very don't have a very good ear. So I'm I'm all about all the tricks and the gadgets to make myself sound good and look good. Yeah, it's all it's all trickery. But um, look, we're having a lot of fun today. And uh, it's coming up to the end of the hour. Uh, I know it's getting pretty late there. Do you want to do you want to finish with one last song and then maybe talk about your new album or your new song until June? To, actually, before you play a song, tell us about that. Until June. Yeah, tell us about the inspiration for that song. Yeah, I mean, uh, for until June, I wrote it with my brother. We wrote it and um, recorded it in his room. I. The inspiration for the writing of Until June is about when we're all cooped up in our little um, houses and we're just not out and about. I feel like fear and doubt and um, not being as confident as we, as we were can like creep in. And so uh, the Until June about that song, like I say, you said, you said, you said a lot. Like you said this, like I wanted to do this, but you said that basically meaning like I wanted to do this, but you being doubt and fear crept in. Oh, so, wow. 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 So you're, you're really, you're, this is great. You're really addressing, you're really addressing because we, you know, we've had lockdown pretty severe and June for you is summer for us. It's winter, right? So it actually, you should really say until December <laughs> because our December, which is hot, like we have hot Christmases. It's hard for it to imagine, but we're like, we're wearing shorts and a singlet. It's 30, 40 degrees or like 105. Fahrenheit, 105 on Christmas Day. I bet you've never thought of that. That's so em, that that's why they call it down under, right? Mm -hmm. Because everything is upside down. So it's freezing here today. So until June would mean what? You want me to wait until winter? <laughs> <laughs> but what you're saying is let's wait until June, summer, nicer weather. I'm guessing that's one one, one interpretation. But what you're also saying is don't let doubt, don't mm -hmm. let the doubt get the better of you we're better than this we will come through this it's a really positive song isn't it yeah oh wow we, we need to really ramp that up so um maybe next time we'll get your brother on and uh and we'll, we'll do a have you got a video for that are you doing a proper sort of production video or is that just a little bit too costly yeah um, I did a lyric video for it. So I actually took clips when we were recording the song. I took um, like clips on my iPad, I believe, and I um, of like us actually writing the song and producing. Oh, it. I, that's right. I've seen that. And yeah. so then I put that together, like a ton of different clips, and then I put the lyrics over it. Um, so yeah, that was that's just a lyric video. We're not planning on doing a music video for it just because I have a I'm planning on releasing a lot of songs this year, like every month almost. So yeah, I feel like that's just a lot to like do for this one. But yeah, I don't know. So it's know. a look. It's a very very good point because we've now I think we've now reached a point where the idea of the music video on YouTube or MTV. You know, I think that those days of those big glossy videos might be gone because, first of all, they're very expensive and, second of all, they're very time-consuming to make. And while you're making them, you're not writing other songs, right? 
Yep. <laughs> and so some people like making videos and that's great. But if you're a songwriter, I would imagine, and I'm very interested in your thoughts here, are the, uh, are the idea of making a video a little bit tedious or is it part of the process? Um, it, sorry, repeat that again. Is it the the proper videos? Like when you've had, when you made that clip of of you and your brother, you know, in, in the lounge room, singing songs on the couch. I, I remember the video in particular. Is that tedious, or is that just all part of the creative flow? Um, I think it's part of the creative flow as far as making the video. Um, but also at the same time, sometimes it can be annoying if if I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Not annoying, but just like another thing that I have to do where it's like, okay, now I have to another do this. Thing, it's another thing to do. Yeah, yeah, but I find it really fun, though. Like, I had a lot of fun making the video. And, I mean, it was pretty easy for me, though, as far as making that video because I just set up the camera when we were already doing what we were going to do as far as songwriting and producing and stuff like that. So that part was easy. I mean, the only like tedious thing was writing out the words like a thousand times. Ah, yeah, I have yeah. to write them out like a thousand times. But that, but also at the same time, I found it fun because I was like my first like actual like lyric video I did. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very, very cool. Look, mm -hmm. I, I am going to, I'm going to let you go, but I, I want to just thank everyone in the room for uh, Noel calling in from Dublin, uh, Ireland, you know, Daniel calling in from London. You know, and all of the other guys, Mike, and uh, and we've got other people with uh, uh, undistinguishable names in their Twitter handles, um, making really great comments about how talented you are. And let's hope that they can come to the uh, the uh, event on the 29th. It'll, you'll be playing at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern on the 29th. It's about two in the morning in the UK. I, I apologise for that. We can't service everyone, but that's completely free as well. And all you have to do there is follow that hashtag Global Social Media Day 2021. You can see that there in the banner. So if we don't have any last requests, do you want to end with one of your most favourite songs? Hmm, my most favourite song? Ah, uh, oh man, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to end with a fun song. I mean, this song is, uh, I wrote it during quarantine, like in the summertime of last year. It's called Peach Tea. It's, a, it's about um, drinking peach tea every day because that's all I did. It's like there was nothing for me to do, and I just went to drink peach tea. So, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's do that. Let's let's uh, really focus on that one, and then we'll um, we'll end and we'll we'll wrap it up, and we'll see you again in in a couple of weeks. Cool. Yeah. This is Peach Tea. <laughs>
Big cheer from the crowd. Thank you. Big cheer from the crowd. Look, I, I just want to give you a, a really good wrap up and, and give you a chance to tell everyone how they can contact you about your new song, about your YouTube channel, and your Twitter account. So, spend a little bit of time telling us how we can find you on mm -hmm. uh, Twitter and the various places, and uh, and then we'll get you back for the halftime show on the 29th. Yeah, I uh, you guys can find me on social media at Sophie Dorston Music. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, um, including music platforms at Sophie Dorston at uh, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, and any any music platform. Um, and uh, yeah, I also have a website, SophieDorstonMusic.com. So be sure to check that out. And um, yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're very, very welcome. So this is a very good example now of what we're doing here in the social media space where Sophie's got an awesome talent. She can write songs, she can sing, she can play guitar all at the same time. And I, I'm just a guy in Melbourne, Australia, that brings that all together. But let's, let's just really play out what's happened here. UK, Canada, US, Australia, Ireland, all on the same call, making comments, all sharing the love. And we'll be doing that again uh, on the, at the Global Social Media Day uh, on the 29th of June for the US and about 2 in the morning for Ireland. But we do have some friends of mine coming in from Ireland. It'll be about 10 in the morning for me here. So I want to thank you again, Sophie, uh, for coming on the show. And yes, I will see you, you. We'll see you in a, a couple of weeks. Woohoo.